Hello, I'm Crackshot. Welcome to another episode of Crackshot Chronicles. Today's topic, 22 long rifle for personal protection. Now there's a lot of debate whether the 22 long rifle is a good round for personal protection or not. A lot of people think that the gun is just not strong enough to kill. Well, technically any firearm can kill. If you hit somebody in the brain or in the central nervous system, central nervous system runs from the brain all the way down, basically it's about an inch wide, uh, and it goes from the brain all the way down, all the way down to, to your core of your body. And it, from there, all the nerve endings spread out so that you can use your extremities and feel things like sense of touch. The thing is, when you hit th those areas, those usually shut somebody down really quickly, immediately, uh, regardless of the caliber that you hit. The 22 can definitely reach there, especially the one I'm talking about is the 22 long rifle. The 22 long rifle is one of the most widely and common used firearms for personal protection because the ammunition is so inexpensive. The guns are not very expensive either. The problem that I have with 22 is that it does not have a center fire cartridge. It has a rim fire. Okay, here I have three examples of rounds that people may use for personal protection when they, when they decide to carry a gun chambered in 22 long rifle. Over here on the, on the far right, to, to my right, I have the Federal Champion, and it fires a 22. This is the Federal Champion, and it fires a 22 long rifle advertised at 1,440 feet per second. This is what the bullet looks like. As you can see, it is extremely small. This is, bullet is actually designed for small game, like squirrels, rabbits, uh, groundhogs. You can successfully take down larger animals like um, wolves and coyotes all day long. People do use them for personal protection against humans because it can be an effective man stopper with proper shot placement. The next one that I have here that's a very good one is a CCI standard velocity 22 long rifle and it is advertised coming out of the barrel at 1,070 feet per second. A little bit slower than the Federal, but if you want to go really, really fast, the CCI Stinger is advertised at 1,640 feet per second. This is what I use for personal protection if I were going to use a personal protection gun chambered in 22 long rifle. The reason why is because, as you can see, the brass between the standard velocity and the, and the uh, Stinger the brass is a little taller and what they do is by taking a taller brass they can put more powder in it they also use a much lighter projectile so it's a 32 grain projectile instead of a 40 grain projectile the 40 grain is this one here the darker one the, the copper color one is the, is the stinger which is a 32 grain by having a, a lighter bullet you can get more velocities and velocity is very uh, very effective at kill at killing the faster the bullet, the more efficient it will kill. Now, the problem that I have with 22 is it's not its lack of penetration. Although it does lack in power, that is the bad point. The good point is that it also lacks in recoil. If it doesn't recoil very much, somebody who doesn't have the full use of their entire hand, let's say they have a missing pinky or a, missing, or a couple of fingers missing because of, of an accident or they're handicapped with arthritis, any kind of birth defect that prevents them from shooting a large caliber gun like a 44 or 45 or 9 millimeter because of their, uh, their, the, the recoil that these guns produce, then they're not going to be very, very lightly protect themselves efficiently with, with those guns. They need a 22 long rifle or something that doesn't recoil much. Because of the lack, lack of recoil, this does shoot extremely accurately and extremely fast. You can really hit the, your target several times with a 22 long rifle much easier than you can with a large caliber firearm. So for that reason, they're great. Now, a lot of people have been killed by 22 probably more than any other round, but that's probably only because there are more people shooting 22s than there are any other caliber. What I don't like about the 22 long rifle is it lacks a 
This, this it's not a center fire. This here is a 44 Magnum right here. If you look at the cartridge, not only does it have a lot of more case capacity for gunpowder than the 22, but it is not a rim fire. This one fires, the 22 fires because the hammer, the firing pin strikes the rim, setting off the primer. Okay, so somewhere on the rim of this cartridge is where it gets hit, and that causes it to discharge the projectile. This is a center fire. As you can see, it has a little uh, firing cap. That cap in the center gets hit by the ha by the firing pin. That causes it a detonation, which in turn ignites the gunpowder, which in turn sends the projectile downrange. These are more reliable. Any center fire cartridge will be more reliable than any rim fire cartridge. As a result, because of the lack of reliability of the 22, I would recommend that you always go with a center fire cartridge. Which one you decide to go with is entirely up to you. I am not suggesting that you use a 44 Magnum for personal protection unless you are a, uh, a good shot. I'm suggesting any bullet, regardless of caliber, that you hit either the brain or the central nervous system will definitely shut down an individual with one shot. However, the 22 is relying on blood loss to stop somebody who's trying to kill you. That will be successful if you hit something that's going to bleed out quickly, like a bullet to the heart or a shot to the brain. But even a bullet to the heart would take time for the person to lose consciousness due to blood loss. So basically what it boils down to is, can a 22 long rifle kill somebody who's trying to kill you? Yes, it can. Can it do it immediately? No, it probably won't. The only way you're going to get an immediate incapacitation, regardless of the caliber, is to shoot them directly in the brain. And there is an organ right around this area in here, about the size of a walnut, called the medulla oblongata. If you hit that, that, for lack of a better term, is the human being's off switch. If you hit that, they're going down no matter what. Problem is, you you could practice all day long at the gun range, shooting at shooting at seven yards to the to the brain, trying to hit the medulla oblongata, and never hit the medulla oblongata because it's such a small target. If you are a person who has the use of all your extremities, you're not handicapped, you're perfectly healthy. I would recommend you stay away from a 22 because it just isn't powerful enough to create immediate incapacitation reliably. It isn't powerful enough to kill a man reliably immediately. Any gun can kill, but we don't use guns to protect ourselves for the purpose of killing the bad guy. We use them for, to, to protect ourselves with the intention of stopping them from hurting us. If they survive, is a different issue. But we don't want to die because the bullet you chose isn't powerful enough to immediately incapacitate them. And that can happen with any bullet. But more likely, the smaller the caliber, the greater the chances it's going to take multiple shots to stop a bad guy that's determined to kill you. So in the end... Can you use a 22 long rifle for personal protection? Yes, you can. As long as you are aware that it may not fire when you sh pull the trigger. I have shot many 22 long rifles and semi-automatics and revolvers. And I find that out of a box of 330, oftentimes I may have a dozen of them that won't go off. If you're using a revolver, and you pull the trigger and nothing happens, pull the trigger again and the next round will circle and it will go off. More than likely when that round comes back around again it, 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 and now that empty chamber, it's going to go off again. Um, if you're using a semi-automatic and you pull the trigger, you, you're going to have to rack the slide to eject that round and get another one in there. I really don't feel comfortable protecting myself with a 22 long rifle because if that first shot which is usually the one that counts, that first shot fails to go off because it, it didn't ignite the primer in it, you're in a pickle. You may not have enough time to cycle another round or pull the trigger a second time. But the choice is yours.
having a 22 long rifle for personal protection is better than having nothing at all. But if you are, if you have all your fingers and you have full full use of your hands, and you're not disabled, I don't see any reason why you should submit yourself to being to limit. Not submit. Let's say limit yourself to a 22 long rifle when there are so many other options of in calibers that are much more effective at than the 22. The only handgun caliber that I can think of that is less effective than a 22 is the 25 ACP. Oops, I just kicked my, my, my thing there. Well, the 25 ACP, it still makes a bigger hole. Bigger holes makes more blood loss. More blood loss creates incapacitation faster. So the choice is yours. But I wouldn't be afraid of protecting myself with a 22 long rifle if I was handicapped. If I'm perfectly able, I would not choose a 22 long rifle for protection. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. That way you can get more videos like it. I appreciate you taking the time to watching it. Thank you so very much for watching Crack Shot Chronicles.